Loving Father, we come here today to be reminded of the truth that you are ready to enter into this very moment of our lives. We don't have to wait for a better time, a calmer time, even a more faithful time. But you are here and you are ready to be a part of our lives in whatever we're dealing with today. I pray that that marvelous truth would be true, especially for our graduates today, as this is a moment in their lives that marks both a completion and a new beginning. Bless each of these young men and women. We're so proud of them. We love them so much. We pray that today they would feel your blessing and ours. Be with us in all that we offer you today as we sing and preach and pray and fellowship in all of the things that we do. May we stand ready to receive from you those gifts we need to be fully alive. Your guidance, your truth, your grace, your calling. Do that work in us today, for we welcome your presence in this very room. Amen. It's good to welcome you to worship today at St. Andrew's Baptist Church. A special day, it would have to be for me to wear another layer of clothes, you know, but uh, it is because we are honoring our 2022 graduates and celebrating with their families and with all of you as their church family, their accomplishments and launching them out on the next stage of life, and we're so happy to be here to be a part of that. We want to say welcome to a number of you who are guests and friends, some of you here as a part of uh, our graduate recognition. We're glad you're here. The green sheet that's in your bulletin is a way for any of you who are guests to tell us a little bit about you. Uh, please fill that out, and you can put it in the offering plate later in the service, or just leave it on the pew if you're not done by then but we thank you for adding the gift of your presence to this special day in our church's life. One of the things that's coming up in our church is a new uh, approach, a new audience for Vacation Bible School. This Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, we are having the first of our Wednesday night sessions of Family Vacation Bible School. It will be the second Wednesday of each of the summer months. So I hope that you will come, whatever your age or stage of life, it is for you. And we will have a, an interactive experience with God's Word and enjoy each other as family, as we learn from the Scriptures, as we sing songs to praise God, as we spend some time around the table sharing our hearts and sharing God's truth with each other. So I hope you'll be with us for Family VBS Wednesday at 6 and invite folks in your life to come and be a part of it. That would be a great entryway into the life and the ministry of St. Andrew's Baptist Church. As we worship together today, open your heart. A good way to do that is to lift up your voice as we worship and praise God right now.
Good morning, boys and girls. Let me get this thing right. Okay, how are y'all today? Good. Good. I'm so glad to see you and all my friends. How are y'all? Oh, my goodness. We're filling up this whole row almost. Yes, if we were on the same row. Okay, well, today, do y'all see all these people with the bunny hats on and robes? They're graduating. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah, they're finishing high school, and they're finishing college, and parents are very excited. Amen. Amen. Yeah, there we go. Now, today, Pastor D is going to be talking about a compass. Now, why do you think he's talking about a compass? Well, it's because a compass tells us our direction, where to go, because it always points in the same direction, north. So if we want to go east, they tell me, as long as it's pointing north, we'd go east. I don't really understand how to use a compass. So I, I'm, I'm really interested in what Dee has to share this morning and how that's going to compare. So this morning, I'm going to talk to y'all about in our lives, we have to make decisions too, don't we? They're going to have to be making some big decisions, some of them about their job, where they're going to work, start earning money, get off mom and daddy's payroll, and some of them are going to college so they can learn what they want to do with the rest of their lives. It's really kind of scary sometimes. But we don't have to be scared because we have God, don't we? And in the Bible, he gives us direction. You know, some people look at others and what they're doing to help them make decisions, but that's not always a good plan, is it? Because just because somebody's doing it may not be the right thing to do, is it, Ellery? No, it's not. And some people, they base on what they need to do by their emotion. Make a decision. Oh, something happened. Then it may be not a good decision because I just felt good in the moment. Because don't, do our feelings change? Yes, feelings change all the time. I can be, well, don't talk to Mr. William, but I could be happy one minute, I can be sad the next, I can be mad, and that's not good. So when we're looking at other people, you know, I found this book, and we've been looking at this in Sunday school. Do y'all see it? And it says, what will you choose? Decisions are just a big word for choices and making choices. Like right here, do you see them? Are they making a good choice? No, they're not getting along, are they? Or up here, when they're pouting about something that somebody's done, that's not a good choice either. But right here, they're talking about it, aren't they? They're working it out. And you know, God tells us in his word, and what's his word? The Bible. And the Bible doesn't change. Just like that compass always points north and doesn't change, the Bible doesn't change. And it says in the book of John, now is John in the Old Testament or New Testament? New. New Testament. See, y'all know this one. And it's John chapter 10, verse 27. It says it right here. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Now, who's the sheep in this verse? You, me, all of them. So we're God's sheep, and God's telling us, hey, if y'all will listen to me, I'm going to speak to you. You're going to know my voice. You're going to know which way to go. You're going to know what decision to make. So we need to listen. We need to stop. We need to look in God's word, read his Bible. We need to talk to him in prayer because then we get to understand and know his voice because we're spending time with God. So we're supposed to spend time with God in prayer and in Bible study. And that teaches us the right things to do. So can we pray right now and ask God to help us make good decisions? Let's make pretty hands. Dear God, thank you for all my friends that are here today. Thank you for these, our graduates, Lord, that are finishing and embarking on the new future and what you have planned for them. Lord, I pray that we would spend time in your word, studying your word, praying and talking to you, and listening to you, Lord, that we would know your voice and know your direction and which way to go. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, thank you.
some of our graduates, when they were sitting on the steps for children's sermons. Wow. Don't blink. At this point at our service, we want to focus on our graduates, call each of them by name and let them know of our love and our blessing and our prayerful support of them in their lives. So at this time, I ask our graduates to stand and come forward so that we may recognize you. Every year um, at the university when our graduate students are um, being hooded, we have to put on our academic regalia, regalia. And one thing that I always worry about, most of us do, is that cat hair. And I, I feel you. So in your honor, I brought mine, but I'm not putting it on today. <laughs> so first, Cassie Drew. Cassie graduated from South Carolina Governor's School for the Arts and Humanities with a focus in creative writing. She'll be attending Wofford College in the fall to begin studies in English and pre-law. Cassie was on the president's list for earning all A's the past four semesters. She received three honorable mentions for scholastic art and writing awards, one for memoir in creative nonfiction and two for poetry. She was president of American Sign Language Club. I have to admit, we're gonna miss Cassie being on the roll in our youth Bible study group. But the good news is you're gonna be progressing to the college Bible study group. She's the daughter of Tommy and Melissa Drew and the proud sister, I'm gonna say, of her older brother, Garrett Drew. Next we have Brandon Woodall. Brandon graduated from Chapin High School. He will be attending Clemson University to study food science and nutrition. Brandon earned a Red Stoll Award Honor of Distinction for Engineering, Industrial, and Agricultural Studies. His parents are Chris and Tammy Woodall. Grandparents are Shelby Woodall and the late Harold Woodall and Michael and Charlotte Williams. And I'll add also that I've just learned that he also plays guitar, so Dee, you better watch out. <laughs> Brandon's also the brother of Gabrielle White. Next we have Garrett Drew. Garrett graduated from the Citadel with a bachelor's degree in sports management and dual minors in business administration and leadership studies. He's living in Charleston and working as a project manager with IBP in Charleston. I'd like to also add that Garrett is employed immediately after graduation. <laughs> Garrett earned gold stars for high academic merit and was on the Dean's List for four semesters. He served as company clerk, company supply sergeant, battalion athletic officer, and regional athletic officer. He was awarded the Colonel Floyd W. Brown Jr. Memorial Award for contributing to the success of cadet life and exhibiting the highest degree of customs and courtesies of a cadet citizen and soldier with an unanswering love and loyalty to the traditions of the Citadel. He's the son of Tommy and Melissa Drew and is the proud brother of his younger sister, Cassie Drew. Next, we have Sarah Fields. Sarah graduated from Clemson University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics and a minor in Political Science. She'll be attending Columbia University where she will study for a PhD in Physics. She will also be part of the um, university dance team. Sarah graduated summa cum laude from Clemson University Honors College with both departmental and general honors. Um, she received the Phi Kappa Phi Certificate of Merit through the College of Sciences, the 2022 Samantha Aaron Cawthorn Award, Shin Su Wu Scholar on 2021, um, C.D. Dunmire Memorial Scholarship, 2020 L.D. Huff Sophomore Award, and was on the Clemson University President's List. Sarah volunteered all four years with the Clemson Life Program, she served as, camp, as captain of the Clemson University competitive dance team, Tiger Strut, where she danced all four years. Sarah co-chaired Clemson's Women in Physics annual conference. She also served as a tutor in calculus and astronomy. 
So one thing I'd have to say is watch out Columbia and watch out Broadway. <laughs> Her parents are, are, are Bert and Kristen Fields, and Sarah also is the proud sister of her older brother, Hunter Fields. Next, Grayson Horton. Grayson graduated summa cum laude from Presbyterian College with a Bachelor of Arts degree in history and triple minors in pre-law, political science, and philosophy. He plans to pursue a graduate degree in speech language pathology at Baylor University. In December, Grayson will marry newly commissioned Army Second Lieutenant Meredith Moore. He played goalkeeper for the PC Blue Hose soccer team and led them to victory against USC in 2019 after 90 minutes in the goal. Is that Southern Cal? <laughs> Just had to ask, I'm sorry. Grayson performed in the PC Chamber Orchestra on cello all four years. He served as a student athletic advisory committee president and vice president of the PC senior class. He served as a worship leader for FCA and president of Campus Outreach Ministries. He received the Outstanding Senior Award for History, the 2022 Senior Achievement Award for the male athlete with the highest GPA and was the male recipient of the 2022 American Legion Award. Personally, I've always enjoyed when you've shared your musical talents with us here. Appreciate that. Um, he's, his parents are Andrew and Christy Horton. Grayson also is the proud brother to his brother and sister, Parker and August Horton. So hope you will join me as we celebrate our graduates and all of their accomplishments. Not all of our recipients of the Lena Andrews Scholarship um, this year were able to be with us, but those of you that are, if you'll please stand when I call your name. Cassie Drew. Cassie is about to begin her college experience majoring in English and pre-law at Walford University. Andy Sandlin. Andy, as he completes his senior year majoring in environmental sciences at the University of South Carolina. Caroline Bennett, as she continues in her junior year majoring in marketing and hotel, restaurant, and tourism at the University of South Carolina. And Coleman Bennett, as he continues to his junior year majoring in business at the Citadel. Congratulations. <laughs>
Good morning. I know there's a, a lot of you out there that helped with these graduates today, whether it was in Sunday school or vacation Bible school, youth trips, whatever the case may be. So thank you to all of you, all of you back here. Anybody that, that helped with them, I know that gives you great joy to see these young men and women, I would say kids, but uh, young men and women graduate. Let us pray. Father God, today is a beautiful day. Thank you for giving us this day here on your earth. We pray now that as we uh, receive these tithes and offerings, that we use them to benefit your church. And um, as we just go through this week, we just ask for your, your guidance and that you would be with us. Amen.
graduates, just a few minutes ago, this church gave each of you two gifts. One of those gifts was a Bible or a devotional book, depending on whether you're graduating from high school or from college. But the other gift I handed you as you came by is a compass. Now, you may have been wondering, why in the world did my church give me a compass for graduation? No, we don't believe you're likely to get so lost at your next school or job that you'll need a compass to find your way back. Your church family gave you a compass today to remind you of a great truth that can lead you to a great life. A compass can give you a sense of direction that comes from beyond yourself. A sense of direction that comes from the Earth's magnetic field. Let that compass remind you of this day and of this truth. You need a compass. A sense of direction from beyond yourself. A few years ago, the United States Coast Guard intercepted a small, stylish pleasure boat that was headed directly away from the U.S. coast, straight out to sea. When the Coast Guard stopped the boat and asked the people on board what they were doing and where they were going, they said, we're just taking a, a ride down the coastline to another city where we want to eat dinner tonight. Well, without direction, their speedy, stylish boat would have taken them to their deaths. They soon would have run out of gas. So many people in our day live that same way. We measure life by how fast we're going or how stylishly we're making the journey. But without a sense of direction, you can't end up where you want to go. Speed and style without direction leads to death, not to life. The Bible says it this way. There is a way that seems right to a man or a woman, but in the end, it leads to death. You need that sense of direction that comes from beyond yourself, from the one who made you and made your world. You need to learn to sense and follow his direction. You need to learn to read your compass. So how do you do that? Miss Beth was just waiting to hear this part, she said. So let's think about it. How do you read your compass? First, you must be still. You can't read this compass on the run or in a panic. You must stop everything else you're doing, stand very still, and hold it very steady before you can read it. You must be still to read the compass of God's direction for your life. In this age of multitasking, it is so common to see someone working on their computer while carrying on six different text messages with the television on and maybe a cell phone up to the ear. You can't read your compass that way. The Bible says, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Learn to take time to be still. Unplug from the constant distractions of technology. Get alone with God. Take time to read and reflect upon the scriptures. Really talk to God in prayer and really listen to God too. Stay involved in church no matter where life takes you. Learn to be still so you can learn to read 
your compass. Secondly, know where the needle points. Now, the needle of a good compass always points toward the north. Now, one day I'll ask God why it doesn't point south, because we are, in fact, the promised land after all. But no matter how little you know about your location, when you read your compass, you at least know where north is. Just as a good compass always points north, the compass of your faith always points toward this. Glorify God with your life. Paul writes to the Thessalonians, we pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. No matter how little you may understand about where you are in picking a school or a major or a date or a job or whatever it is, when you read your compass, you'll know this. The direction God wants you to take is always the one that will bring glory to Him. Always. It's due north. Here's something else about reading your compass. Turn everything else to line up with that direction. Once you see the way the needle is pointing, you turn the compass to bring everything around the dial in proper alignment with it. When you get north lined up, then you can line everything else up too. When you read the compass of your faith and know that God wants you to glorify Him with your life, then you can bring everything into your life in line with that truth. Every choice, every relationship, every commitment, every attitude, everything. When you get your main direction in life right, glorifying God, then everything else has a way of lining up too. Jesus said this early in his ministry. Repent. And believe the good news. Repent means to turn. Turn your life around to line it up with God. Turn it around to line it up with the good news that God loves you and invites you to live for Him. Jesus said it this way, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. When you listen to God's voice, when you know that life's direction is to glorify Him, then you can follow wherever He leads. Let's think about some times you need to stop and read your compass. First this, when life's new challenges feel too big. In that classic basketball movie, Hoosiers, one of my favorites, the small town Hickory Huskers miraculously make it to the finals of the Indiana State Basketball Tournament. When they arrive at the arena to practice before the biggest game of their lives, the team walks into the biggest building they've ever seen. Their small town school gym would seat maybe a few hundred fans at best, but this arena in which they were to play would seat thousands and thousands. The coach saw in the eyes of his players that they were afraid, afraid that this was too big a place for them to play and win. Then he had an idea. He had the biggest player on the team put the smallest player on the team on his shoulders and armed with a tape measure, asked him to measure the distance from the rim to the floor of the basketball court. It was, of course, 10 feet, the same as their home gym. The distance from the backboard to the free throw line was 15 feet, just like it was back home, and on and on he went. 
The coach wanted his team to see that even in this big new place, the game was still the same. They could play and they could win the same way they'd done back home. Graduates, you soon, soon be playing the game of life in a much bigger arena. Some of you are taking your game to the college campus, others to the workplace. But don't let the challenges of a bigger place overwhelm you. Read your compass. The rim is still 10 feet from the floor. What's true is true. What's right is right. The call to glorify God doesn't change. The Bible gives us this wonderful promise. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. So much is changing for you right now, but remember the things that never change. Read your compass and stay the course. Another time, as you pursue your studies. If you are a Christian and you're reading your compass, you won't go to school just to get away from home, as tempting as that feels sometimes. You won't go off to school just to get by. You won't even go to make good grades and land a good job. If you're a Christian, you will go on in your studies to love the Lord your God with all your mind to glorify God by making the most of these precious, fleeting opportunities. These moments he gives you to learn and to grow as a person. Paul gave this challenge to his young friend Timothy and to you and me. He said, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. That's one who's passed the test. A workman who doesn't need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. So read your books. Take good notes. Study for the tests. But as you do all that, also read your compass. You need to read your compass when your faith is tested. Young adults face two tough tests of faith. One, you could call this, I'm not satisfied with a second-hand faith. As you go off to college or work, you realize, as never before, how much you are like your parents. God does have a sense of humor, doesn't he, parents? And you'll wonder, how much of my faith is really mine? And how much of it might be just what I know my parents like to hear? That's a tough test. But as you face it, don't forget this. Parents believe before children believe. Your parents had to believe in cleanliness before you did, even if you didn't like a bath. They believed in trips to the doctor and immunizations before you could believe in good health. And because they believe in God, they brought you to this place. And they encouraged you to believe. Just the same way. Now comes the time for you to choose God for yourself more than you've ever done before. And don't let people with a different faith or no religious faith make you feel second class. Read your compass. Let it lead you to a more personal relationship with God than you've ever had before. Here's the second test most young adults face. You could call it, I miss my circle of Christian friends. One of the reasons I hope you'll always remember this day is this may be one of the last times that this particular gathering of young adults is in this place together, just like this ever. You will leave this time of life and go 
so many different directions, doing different things. And on to school, on to work, some of you thinking about family and, and marriage and all of these things. And as you enter that new world, you'll miss the security and support of that circle of Christian friends. Because as you'll learn again and again as adults, when you feel you're losing your circle of Christian support, you feel like you're losing part of your faith. That's when you must read your compass. Because wherever you go, whatever you do, God wants you to have a circle of Christian support. If you're close by, I hope you'll stay involved in this church's life every time and every way you can. But if you're somewhere else, look there. Find a group of Christian friends at, at your college or your new workplace. Let God guide you to other people who will read the compass alongside you and seek to follow Jesus as you're doing. Remember what James said about life's tough tests. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, the ability to keep on. You'll face some tough tests, but remember, those tests can build you. They can build your confidence in who you are, what you believe, and what you've learned to do. Read your compass as you seek a vocation. How many people have asked you, so what are you going to do with your life? I remember the, the last time I graduated, I, I thought I just might hand out cards. When someone asked me that question, I would give them one, and the card said, congratulations. Everyone who asked D that question gets to pay for one month of his college education and you're on the list. But I didn't, and they didn't, and it all worked out. Well, I don't want to join those who are rushing to know what you want to do ultimately with your life, but I do want to give you a little advice. And that is ask the right question. Ask the compass question about your life work. Don't just ask, how can I make the most money or how can I impress the most people? Read your compass and ask, how can I glorify God in the work I will do in my life? That question may lead you to the right job and you may be doing what you know God has called and created you to do every day for a living. But it also might lead you into the church where you know that you have a ministry that makes a difference for God's kingdom while you're doing something else to pay the bills. But either way, it will lead you to a fulfilling life. Vocation means calling. And you can't answer a calling if you don't listen. And you can't know how to listen unless you know the one who calls. So read your compass. Embrace the challenge Peter offers us when he says, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. And I know this may seem so premature, but trust me, it's not. Read your compass as you build a family. You may feel that you're very far away from any issues related to building a family. But I want you to know that it's not too soon to start reading your compass. To decide to glorify God in the relationships that you're exploring and building. Because this is true for you no matter what age you are. Choosing the right person begins with choosing the right purpose. If your purpose is to share your life 
with a person who loves God and lives for Him, then let that direction guide your dating life, your courtship life. This isn't a time to sow wild oats. It's God's time for you to begin honoring your future marriage and building your future family. It's a time to say with our father in the faith, Joshua of old, but as for me and the household that I will one day create, we will serve the Lord. Let me close with a compass story. Seems appropriate, doesn't it? This comes from one of my favorite movies, a really raucous prison movie, The Shawshank Redemption. Red. A man who had been in prison for 40 years for murder was paroled. And suddenly, for the first time in decades, he was outside prison walls. For the first time since he was a very young adult, he actually had freedom and responsibility. He wasn't used to it. He didn't know if he could make it. Part of him wanted to do something stupid to break his parole and get sent back to prison where life made sense to him. One night on his way home from the grocery store where he had been given his first job after prison, he stopped at a pawn shop and stared into the window. You could tell from the way the camera swept across the items in the window that he was thinking about buying a gun. And you think he's going to buy a gun and hold someone up so he can go back to prison. But while he was looking at those items through the window, he saw something else in that pawn shop window and it was a compass. And when he saw the compass, he remembered a promise he had made to a friend long ago. Andy Dufresne, his best friend in prison, had escaped a few years before this and had disappeared and never been found or caught. But just before Andy broke out of prison, he said to Red, I want you to make me a promise that if you ever get out of here, you'll make a journey. There's an old hayfield north of town. It's, it's, it's distinguished by a huge rock wall that divides it from the next owner's property. And there's a big old oak tree up there just at the crest of the hill. You can't miss it. And just where that tree is, if you look at the rocks in the wall, there's a volcanic glass that doesn't belong with all those other northeastern rocks. Look under it. There's something I want you to have. That's all he would tell him. So Red bought his compass, and he followed it. He followed the direction it gave him to that field, to that wall, up the hill to that tree. And he saw that glass rock. When he dug it out and looked underneath it, there was a little tin box. And in it was a letter from his friend Andy. A letter inviting him to join him in his new life and enough money to make the trip. Graduates, you like red now have more freedom and responsibility than you've ever known. You've earned it, but it won't be easy. You'll be tempted to do some foolish things, perhaps. You'll be tempted to give up and join those who lead a safe but empty life. But before you give in to that, remember that your friend, life's best friend, is inviting you to make a journey. He's inviting you to read your compass, to follow where it leads, and find the treasure that he wants you to have. Treasure. 
that will lead you to a wonderful life. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you offer us direction. We pray that for our graduates, but we pray it for each one of us today, that we will know that you lead and that our response is to follow. So speak to us in these moments of decision and commitment. Help us to take the step today we'll always be glad we took. It's in your name we pray. Amen. He leadeth me, O blessed thought. That's hymn number 68. We're going to sing it to celebrate that truth that Christ offers us a sense of direction in life and we can follow it to a life that's more abundant, a life that truly matters. If you need to begin that journey today by giving your life to Christ as your Savior and Lord, if you need to renew your life to say, I've not been following, I want to start again, I want to, I want to go where Jesus goes, I want to go in His direction. Whatever God has laid on your heart, it would be my joy to share it with you as your pastor and friend. As God speaks, listen with your heart. Follow where he leads as we stand together to sing. You know, there's something inherently funny about getting lost in He Leadeth Me, isn't there? We got a little turned around for a minute, but that's okay. Only church people can do those funny things that way, and we are funny. 
After our benediction, our graduates are going to recess to the atrium, so you'll have a chance to come face to face with them to congratulate them and to pledge your love and prayers and maybe share a memory or two of them as uh, you've been involved in their lives. They'll cherish that and remember it, so I hope that you'll do that. As you leave the service today, I pray that you'll go knowing that you need a compass, not just a device to help you navigate through the geography of this world, but that inner compass of direction that comes from knowing and loving and serving Jesus Christ, that direction that can allow you to face every challenge of life and not be taken off track but know that you can continue to live for him, to love him, and to bring glory to his name. May this prayer be your commitment and mine. Praise God that he leadeth.